Desodano ATF 400G6 has a maximum capacity of 400 tonnes, but only a radius of 2.7 metres. This model of it comes in a Tadano branded box and there's some specification information about the real crane on the end. This particular version of the model is a limited edition and it's in the colours of Davies Crane Hire, which is a Welsh company. Pulling out the trays we helpfully see that one is marked bottom so we can turn it over. And on the other side we see it's marked top, but strangely that's written on with a pen. As is usually the case with a WSI model, the two trays are taped together so you have to cut them. And then we see the parts are tightly packed and some even remain in the top tray. Instruction manuals is one area that's improved a lot over recent years. And this one is certainly very good with a parts list and many clear photos. There is only one piece of information missing and that's a reaving diagram for the largest of the hooks. As usual we'll start by getting the crane ready for the road. This model comes with a nice cylindrical key to operate the winch with. And the first thing to do is to take off the packing tape and find the end of the thread. With good old thread in hand it's an easy matter to take it to the front of the crane. And here we've just added a single line hook block. As we're going to start off with the model in transport mode we may as well hitch up the hook to the loop at the front of the cab. Once it's on we can winch it in a little bit to make it look tight. And then we can go to the back of the crane to complete the initial part of the assembly. And with this model there are two sets of handrails included. And here we're installing the transport set which are folded down to reduce the headroom. The exhaust block is also a separate element and that's removable so you can get access to the winch. So there we have it and that lets the crane appear in its most basic transport formation. Both the real crane and the model have an option and that is to include the power system. And this increases the lifting capacity of the crane. Firstly I'm just using a screwdriver to hollow out the connections to make sure that the pins will fit. And it's easier to just check that now rather than try and do it when you're installing the part. So with the excess paint removed from inside the holes we can now offer up the power system and fit it to the boom. The only thing to watch out for here is the pendant bars, they are delicate and you don't want to snag or break them. So far so good and let's stick that pin right in. Two pins are needed to secure the power system to the boom. And then there's a screw which attaches the power system lift ram to the boom. It is a fairly shallow fitting screw so you have to take a little bit of care to be able to drive it in correctly. But once it's in it does a reasonable job of securing the end of the piston. Ok so that's the main power system fixed to the boom, we now need to sort out the pendants. And they need to be stretched out properly so they don't get snagged when the power system is working. The ends of the pendants are just fixed to a couple of lugs at the back of the boom. And the connection is made by a tiny brass nut and bolt. And a couple of small tools are provided with the model to help you do them up. Of course you could try doing the tiny nuts and bolts up with your fingers and thumbs and I wish you the very best of luck. There is a small pulley which folds out to guide the hoist winch. Although it was fixed incorrectly on the review model and had to be reset. Here we now see the crane in transport mode with the power system fitted and the intermediate sized hook block is fitted. Looking underneath there's some very good detailing of the transmission and suspension. And there are also some steering linkages visible which are only on the model. One nice small detail is that all of the mud flaps are of a nice soft flexible rubber. There are different wheels for driven and non-driven axles. And the tyres have got Michelin branding in the sidewalls. The driving cab is detailed with good mirrors, and the Davies crane hire graphics are detailed and stand out well. Behind the cab there's some very nice mesh and chrome work, and even the no step sign is etched into one part. At the back the lights have plastic lenses and there's a realistic number plate. Another area that's really good on the model is the tiny graphics on the outrigger beams. The crane cab has got metal grab rails and a detailed interior. The overall counterweight assembly is nicely modelled and it includes a winch for a luffing fly jib. Also nice is the metal boom ram and the cable spool looks convincing as well. The power system is a fairly simple arrangement and it's all modelled in metal. And in the boom head all of the pulleys are metal too. There are three hook blocks supplied with the model and this is the largest of them with nine pulleys. And it's a very nicely made metal part. It's also good because it's got very small spring loaded working safety catches.
Here we have the crane in a perverted kind of wheels free mode and we see the steering is in linked axle triples. I'm not sure why it's been modelled this way because it does restrict the available steering modes that can be posed but at least there is working suspension on each axle. So out we go onto the Cranes Etc motorway and the Tadano does a good job driving in a straight line. Let's now set the steering using that massive hand linkage that's connected to the driver and although the range of movement is moderate the Tadano does steer in a nice curve. It's time now to set the crane up so it's outriggers away and they are metal and two stage and they slide out reasonably easily. To lower them it's the usual unwinding mechanism and it's good to see a smooth piston and there are also spreader plates included with the model. The outrigger beams are strong enough and they support the model wheels free. Next we'll swap out the transport handrails for the operational handrails and that will give the crane a more realistic operating look. Now for the exciting part which is always raising one's boom and on this model you can lock the extension using a small screw in the cylinder jacket. It works well but the diameter of the piston is a tiny bit too small and so it doesn't quite lock straight. Rotating the review model was generally okay although sometimes it was stiff and jerky. And a nice inclusion with the model is a pair of lifting straps which enable you to lift the counterweight blocks. And of course it's always nice to be a crane driver even if it's only for a minute or two. To fit the counterweight you have to offer it up and pin it in position. And the only pity of this main part is that it can't be split down into smaller components. And that means that some of the posing possibilities of the real crane are not possible. Once the counterweight tray is secured in position it's solidly connected. And that's just as well because it does get a fair amount of weight on it when the ballast is fully loaded. Let's now move on and take a look at the boom. And the boom sections all slide out very nicely. Also a very good aspect of the model is that the various sections are modelled with thin wall metal so it looks realistic and there are also boom locking positions at the 46%, 92% and 100% points. And again that's another nice feature becoming standard on WSI telescopic crane models. Each locking position is achieved by a little spring clip inside the boom section. So we've seen the standard boom arrangement now let's put on the power system. This puts two additional suspension points on the top of the boom and by tensioning those up you can increase the capacity of the crane. So here we are attaching the suspension point of the power system onto the top of the boom and the connection is again achieved using small brass nuts and bolts. With the connection made we can now proceed to wind in on the power system winch and we're doing that as we raise the power system up using its hydraulic ram. We keep going until the power system pulls on its pendant bars which are attached to the back of the boom and if you tension it all up the system looks good. The only small point about the power system winch though is that it doesn't have a positive lock so it relies on friction which limits the amount of tension you can achieve. However once it's erected the crane is a tall and impressive model. <music> So let's do a dim check and get the measuring tape out and fully extended it's around 4 feet or 120 centimeters tall. This is another very good crane model from WSI. As usual it has a very good standard of detailing and the provided features work well. This particular version in the colors of Davies crane hire is very good looking. And if all things are considered, this is another outstanding crane model.